Yeah, what's going on, y'all? Once again, it's your boy, Truth Be Told, back with another video. I know I've been away for a while, but today, y'all, I got a Freestyle Wednesday video coming from you guys, so um, so let's get started. So today, y'all, I just want to talk about a quick, quick ways of how these elites always use subliminal messages of telling us the truth. Now, notice how this movie is called Luca. Luca is nothing else but a short term for what? Lucifer. And I want to really dive deep on this because, man, it's it's a really subliminal movie for our kids to hypnotize our kids, mom manipulate our kids, human program our kids. And I want to read something to you guys real quick before we get started about the characters. So it says right here, Revelation 13 and 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his powers in the seat and a great authority. Hint how they say that these are fishes, right? But to me, they don't look nothing else but like demon reptilians of the fallen angels that have been walking among us this whole time. And notice the feet of the character when they are in their main character are like the feet of a bear. <laughs> Come on, y'all. I want to I want to reach on something else too. Hint how the, when they're in their main characters, the whole movie is about how they literally come out the sea and become flesh. Their skin pretty much becomes flesh. Word becomes flesh, right? So I want to read the scripture to you guys real quick that makes sense about this. And it says right here, Revelation 13 and 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his name, his head, the name of blasphemy. Notice this, you guys. This is very deep. Notice, literally, if you guys seen this movie or seen your kids watch this movie, notice how they come out the sea pretty much as beast. Like I said, they're like demon reptilian angels that have been following, that have been walking among us, right? And then they come out to see it as human, as flesh. <laughs> this is deep, you guys. So I want to go on to something else real quick about the chain game. You guys know how I feel about the chains and what it represents, right? So here how, once again, with John Cena, what was his group called? The chain gang. Hear that? The chain gang. Right? Same with like G-Unit. G-Unit. Notice how... Both of these terms, the G stands out a lot, right? G for G unit, chain gang, G for the chain, right? Notice how this ain't nothing else but a representation to the Freemason symbol. There's no way around this stuff, you guys. Notice how they're wearing chains, right? Notice how it says right here in Travis Scott, Butterfly, you in the mob as soon as you rock the chain. Once again, you in the mob as soon as you rock the chain. Right here it says, Ezekiel 19 and 4, the nations also heard of him. He was taken into their pit and they brought him with chains into the land of Egypt. Yo, know, there's no way around this stuff, you guys. When these guys are wearing these chains and coming up with these chain gangs and shit like that, it's a cult. It's a cult. You know what I'm saying? It's nothing else but for the Freemasons, bro. Just right here, Peter's 2 and 4. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved into judgment. Come on, y'all. There's, there's really no way around this stuff, man, for real. Let's go on. And I'm showing you guys this because I really want to show you guys how to, like, literally, like, the NFL, the WWE, all these entertainment and names and news, all this shit, they always take names from the Bible and mind manipulate it from the truth. You know what I'm saying? So hear, the, hear me out on this one, Hebrews 11 and 30, right? By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. Here how, when it comes down to the WWE character, Chris Jericho, what's his finisher called? The walls of Jericho. Like, come on, you guys. Like, they would not be doing this stuff if it wasn't real. If God wasn't real, like, they would not be doing this stuff. If this word wasn't real, they wouldn't be doing this stuff, man. Like, get someone give me a reason. Why would they do this if they thought they were their own gods and they knew they were their own gods? Why would they do this if they weren't worried about something coming at them? You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, you guys. There's no way around this stuff. Let's keep going. Now, this is deep because I'm going to take two teams out of this scripture right here. And it's going to make sense. So check this out. Revelation 8 and 3. It says right here. And another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. 
Hint how it says the golden altar, right? Stands nothing else. How you see how these Freemasons and elites took Bible context and put it into their own terms of their own beliefs, like the Golden State Warriors. You know what I'm saying? And how their logo is nothing else but like the the like an image of the altar. You know how I'm saying the bridge. You know what I'm saying the the climb to go up. You know what I'm saying? Come on, man. There's no way around this stuff. And how it also says right here the prayers of all the saints upon the Golden Altar. And how we have an NFL. The uh, uh, sorry, but also like. With the Golden State, look how the um, the same colorway is the same colorway for the uh, Freemasons. So, like I said, man, there's no way around this. But hint how, like I was saying, the prayers of all saints upon the Golden Altar, right? Hint how even the saints. Now, this would kind of firm, confirm to me that black people are the real Jews and Israelites. I've been knowing this for a while. But I'm just saying, like, I'm not trying to say this to offend nobody, but it's the truth. Black people are the real Israelites and the Jews, and they are the children of God, which is why everything and every everyone's pointing at us with hatred. So hit out with the saints. Look how many times they got robbed, right? And we already know the NFL scripted. Like, it, all these plays and pictures I'm showing you are scripted. I can tell you right now, like, if you're telling me four seconds on the clock and you got to make a tackle, why would you even try to hit someone like this? You're getting paid millions of dollars, people. And see, a lot of people are never going to see that description rig because all these fans out here, they, I don't give a fuck if they buff or not. Some of these niggas never stepped on a football field in their life. So they couldn't even tell you what's real and what's not. But me being able like to say that I, I played this game before, and I can tell you now, bro, four seconds on the clock, and I don't give a fuck if I'm breaking my leg, if I'm breaking my arm, I'm breaking anything on my body. If it comes down for, to us to go to the championship, I'm about to put everything online. I'm not going to hit somebody like this. And miss. <laughs> Come on, bro. But notice anyway how they scripted the Saints to pretty much always make it so close. They get so close. But yet, something comes in their way to defeat them. Whether it's a play. Whether it's a, uh, you know, a referee not calling the P.I. Something always comes in between their ways. And that's nothing else but the Freemasons slash the Devils. Saying to the children of God that you're never going to cross the kingdom. Not as long if I'm in your way. And that's what I'm saying, you guys. It's so deep how this Saints team is like, like literally, bro. Like, no wonder why it's in the South. No wonder why when you do the breakdowns of New Orleans of the race capacity, it's 59% black people, uh, 33% white people, and 2% Asian people. So, bro, what more evidence do you guys need to see? Why do you think it's called the Saints? Why do you think their colorway is gold? We all know the, the colorway for the Saints of uh, God's children is gold, white and gold. <laughs> Come on, y'all. There's no way around this. It even says in Mark 13 and 13, and he shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but that he that shall endure until the end, same shall be saved. So that tells us, man, like we are going to be hated. And I'm sorry to say, but whether you hate the, the truth or not, black people get it the worst right now. They get it the worst. I don't give a fuck. They get it the worst, especially the ones who are like doing something positive in the world. Especially the ones who got a good job, a good car, nice things that makes others feel uncomfortable. They get hated the worst. I'm noticing that. And I'm sorry to say, I'm one of those guys, bro. I got a good job, nice ass car paid off. But for some reason, I guess that still doesn't make the world happy or give them a, a mindset that, hey, you know what? I'm not a bad person. Hey, you know what? You shouldn't blame us or, and accuse us one for all. You know what I'm saying? That's not fair. I, I swear, I, I, I'm a walking message to. I'm not like the rest, or I'm not like everybody else. But still, I still get hatred. Still, people hate me. Still, people stare at me. Still, people love to make me feel that I'm hated. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, bro, you can say what you want to say, but at the end of the day, I'm sorry to say it. Well, I'm not sorry to say it, but it's the truth that black people are the children of God. So, and before I let you guys go, I just want to reach on this real quick. Because... This is what I'm saying. If you guys don't believe this stuff, take a look, for example, what's going on overall right now. I'm going to read this. I'm going to break it down. Because everything I read in this small little paragraph is what's going down right now in our world, right before your eyes. So Revelation 13 and 16 and 17. And he caused all both small, great, rich, and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or their foreheads. We know what that mark is. We know what's being pushed upon us right as I'm speaking. Let's keep going. And it says right here, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast of the number of his name. You guys need to understand now 
that what's going to come in front of us is just the beginning. And I'm not just talking about black people. I'm talking about all people. You need to be prepared to understand what's going to come. If you are not going to get this mark, then you need to be prepared to be homeless. Be prepared to lose it all. Be prepared to not work. Be prepared to be out there with the rest of them that you were looking down at one point. Be prepared to look at your enemies with love. You know what I'm saying? Like, be prepared for all this shit if you're not going to take that mark. I'm telling you guys now, it's right in front of our faces. Whether you believe this shit or not that I'm saying, whether you think I'm crazy or not, the information and the truth is right in front of your face. Notice how so far we are in a, a time where money is low. We're getting to a cashless society. Everything is becoming digital. Everything is becoming digital. Literally. Can't even go to the store anymore and break a $100 bill no more without them saying, I don't have enough cash. Coins is, is going low. Don't you see how they're getting their new world order right in, round, right in front of our eyes? They're showing us what's going to happen right in front of our eyes. They're taking away our freedom. They're taking away our rights. You notice how everything on the news lately, and I told you guys, man, when it comes to the news, it's like 99 or it's like 90% lies, 10% truth. They're not lying about their, you know, where they want their um their records at for, you know, you know, the shot. They're not nowhere close to where they want to be. That shows we are not as dumb as people as we think we are. We are not as undivided as we think we are. We may feel that we are, but we're really not. That shows at the end of the day, we may not agree, but somewhere down the line, we're all on the same page when it comes down to this shot. So that's why I want people to understand, man. You, you guys got to understand, like, all we have at this moment is each other. Of course, we got God. God is always going to be there for us. But it's our job as people to unite. It's our job as people to come together, push everything in the past, let the past be at last, and come with a forgiveness heart. Because that's one thing about what God wants us to learn is how to learn how to forgive. You know what I'm saying? You got to have forgiveness in your heart if you want to become a better person. Forgiveness can take you so much to where you want to go compared to so much where you don't want to go. Forgiveness is really a key. I'm telling you guys now, a lot of people like, uh, why people out here are murderers and, and homosexuals or, you know, um, um, you know, whatever the case is, a lot of people have stories behind to why they are who they are today. And it has to do a lot with unforgiveness. It has to do a lot with not forgiving the, per the person who did wrong to them. That's why I try to speak that heavenly on everyone around me that forgiveness is a key. You know, and I'm an eyewitness to that, bro. And I'm an eyewitness to that. Forgiveness is the key. If you can't forgive, how can you want to, how can you, like, if you can't forgive, how do you think you're going to walk, you know, in the direction God wants you to walk if you don't have the key of forgiveness? So, like I said, man, we got to be prepared for what's coming, y'all. Like, I, I really hope everyone out there is prepared because they're doing everything right in front of our face. Notice how we can't even go across the country no more without that card. <laughs> that card is going to become way more and more and more mandated. Be prepared. <laughs> it's going to become more mandated for that card to be shown for you to do anything. <laughs> And I'm not laughing because it's funny. I'm laughing because I know now that there is only one God. And I'm not saying it's Jesus. I don't believe in Jesus. I don't believe in Christianity. Because Christianity's main goal was to come after God's children. They even said at one point that we were cursed and our face was lightened. By God, which caused us to be dark skinned. They don't even have the audacity to tell the truth. So that's how I know there's only one God. And He's a jealous God. And so I encourage everyone out there, man, to keep your faith and keep it going. Once again, it's your boy, Truth Be Told, and I'm out.